conviction, or perhaps even belief, that threads through a lot of conversations about God's existence here on YouTube and perhaps even in the real world, although I don't get it as much in the real world as I do here on YouTube. This conceptual identity, or ideal, is typically on the non-theist side. Phrase in question form, the, the ideal can be expressed like this. If I could see God, I would believe in God. Yet I do not see God, I do not sense God, therefore belief in God is irrational. In other words, the common conviction is this. Someone is rational in believing that something exists only if that person can sense that something. In some regard, this could be identified as a type of crude empiricism. While this view may appear to be logical a priori, it quickly deflates on deeper inspection. For one thing, this view is self-defeating, for the proposition, I believe only what I see, cannot itself be seen. Thus, if this proposition is to be believed, the one who holds it would have to see the abstract proposition they just uttered, which is illogical, for the very proposition is abstract. Second, there are many things that exist that cannot be seen, for example, numbers, sets, mathematical objects, the mind, the laws of logic, etc. So to hold the idea that belief in the non-visible, or even the undetectable, is irrational should be regarded with a large dose of caution, for it would be applying a different standard to oneself to believe in the laws of logic or your mind while, the, while regarding the existence of God as absurd. However, one may object to my thesis so far by suggesting that one can in actuality believe in something if they can sense it, hence belief in God is still irrational. Yet this idea would be guilty of committing the category fallacy. The category fallacy occurs when properties are allocated to something that applies only to objects of another category. For example, you would not ascribe the color red to the note C, for notes do not have colors. Similarly, the category fallacy is committed when people suggest things like smell should sound like something, or universal should be just in one location, or that God should be an empirical entity. If we use the Christian definition of God, we cannot fault him for not being an empirical entity, ignoring the whole Jesus Christ thing. For by definition, God is an infinite spirit. It is not part of the nature of a spirit to be an empirical entity, or visible. Hence, it is a category fallacy to ascribe sensory qualities to God when God is spirit. Third, acknowledging our world has three dimensions, we can commonly see objects where only completely visible, yet this does not halt our belief that they are fully there. For example, you come home from work and there before you is an unsharpened pencil on the table. From your angle from the door, it appears the pencil is simply a rectangle. Assuming this argument for believing is seeing, we would have to reject that the object on the table is a three-dimensional object. Yet we know such a rejection to be absurd, for we know objects continue to exist even when they are not observed. Concisely, if one holds to the idea seeing is believing, then they must reject mind-independent physical objects. As a side note, it is possible that we can sense apart from sensory apparati. In other words, it is possible that we are aware of things that do not appear to our sensory um, systems via some sort of intuition, i.e. being directly aware, void of thought. Think, for example, of moral values. When we hear of child neglect or abuse, we know these things to be inherently wrong. Likewise, it would not be extremely outrageous to suggest that individuals could be aware of a sensory void being who is holy and good. Please note that this is not my main argument within this thesis, but rather a side note to consider. In the future, I'd like to develop the thought further of religious experience and the importance of such things, but that is a future topic. Lastly, it is often the case that we believe in the existence of things because we infer their existence to, to explain some group of facts. In such situations, entities are believed to exist void of sensory stimulus. For example, think of the idea that there are other minds other than your own. You're, you cannot see, hear, feel, taste, or smell other minds, yet we believe that our neighbors or friends and colleagues have minds. Hopefully, that is. Likewise, it is not absurd to suggest that one could infer the presence of God in a similar way as we do with those minds around us. In conclusion, such a belief in crude empiricism should be avoided in light of such entities as numbers, the laws of logic, and other minds. These abstract objects are not an exhaustive list, but exemplify the rationality and belief in such objects that we cannot see. Further, as a Christian, it is important to point out and mention that God did empirically reveal himself in the person of Jesus Christ, a person that is verifiable via historical criticism. 
To assume that the Christian God does not give any acknowledgement to his existence would be to ignore such evidences as the duality of the mind, cosmology, deductive argumentation and logic, morality, historical criticism, and most importantly, via Christian worldview, divine revelation. In sum, seeing is not believing. Rather, searching leads to belief and conviction. Thus, make sure that sight isn't a prerequisite for belief in existence.